What's up? Jesse's back. Saturday, nice day. Well, actually, not a nice day, shitty day. But Saturday afternoon, feeling good, getting ready to, you know, dive into some action RPG stuff. There's been a ton of it, like, just hammered with information over the past couple weeks. We have a Diablo 4 patch incoming. They had their own little developer powwow thing. Then we had the whole Exile Con just full of information about Path of Exile 2. Feels like people are, you know, uh, there's there's a lot of attention on action RPGs, and I think for good reason. I love the genre. It's so good. Uh, but Path of Exile 1 is what we're talking about today. Still the GOAT because uh, of PoE's depth and amount of content and so on and so on. And, the you know, the knowledge ceiling being infinite. So today... We uh, are just going to talk about what we're expecting when the patch notes drop on Thursday. Uh, we'll talk, we'll hit some of these subjects I've written out, um, and then we'll scroll through the league page, uh, talk about trial of the ancestors expectations. So first we'll go through my little spreadsheet. These are two topics that I could make a whole video on per topic. I have done a couple of videos that are adjacent to slam builds or just like melee builds and close range bottom left of the tree type builds. <laughs> and I've shown this before. Yeah, this area down here specifically right in here. Uh, the war cry nodes, the weapon damage nodes, like increased sword physical damage, th this part of the tree, right? It's what we're talking about. I don't think the 3.22 is going to fix defenses in that part of the tree in any capacity because I don't actually really think it's a solvable problem right now. PoE2 is going to try to solve the problem. There are a number of ways you could try to look at it and approach it, but the nature of Path of Exile right now, it's not really a problem that you can solve. Uh, by the nature of the build, uh, and in comparison to a ranged build, like a bow build, or trap mine type build, or righteous fire, or all of the elementalist archetypes, you know, uh, anything ignite, uh, poison builds, I mean, I can go on and on and on, nothing has the, the defensive problem that slams does uh where not only do you have to get totems down uh but you also have to be next to the enemy and you you have to do something that requires some level of action you know a number of frames to complete something in order for the boss to take damage and I mean, there's so many ways you could approach that problem, but right now, I don't even think that buffing defenses on the bottom left of the tree will ever make a slam build a good boss killer. You know, um, the only approach that some people have considered is the damage thing. Well, if you just buff their damage and they one shot everything, I don't really think that's solving the problem. Um, and I have talked about this ever since suppression was added where, you know, um, it feels better than ever to play like a glass cannon build. And the next topic we could talk about for a long time is as it pertains to the economy in softcore trade, if you treat the game from a competitive standpoint at all, um, so you're not playing SSF, I mean, you can play SSF competitively too, but the point I'm making is if you care about, you know, your progress in the league, uh, farming currency is actually kind of a relevant thing for you making your character and making progress. There are a lot of item thresholds that, that make your character stronger. I mean, this game is all about powering up and getting stronger and items and uh, currency and farming currency is a huge, is a critical part of your character's growth. And this is another problem that does have solutions, 
but there's nothing that GGG is going to implement. So it's basically an unsolvable problem where cast on death portal glass cannon zoom builds with no defensive auras are way, way better if you are trying to optimize softcore trade. So if you if your goal is from an economic standpoint, um, you can't play a slow build. You just can't. You can't afford to because um, you're losing out. You're basically running at a slower pace than your competition. Um, and so that's why basically every single build in softcore trade, not talking about hardcore, specifically softcore trade, they all end up kind of looking the same where you blow up packs from pack to pack. You blow up and you basically try to go as fast as possible. Movement speed, movement skills, whatever it is. And you're just supposed to blast. And that actually is one of the best parts about Path of Exile in comparison to other games is that blasting is fun as hell. And blowing up packs, exploding the whole screen. Um, that level of player power is what draws a lot of people to the game. And it's what drew me. I mean, I love that kind of thing. I think it's really cool and exciting and it's almost chaotic. But uh, it it removes the incentive for someone like me to try more or less meme certain certain meme archetypes that simply cannot fit into this mold of zoom um and there are a lot of ways to solve this problem and some people will say well you just if you want to build that doesn't zoom then you just make it a boss killer so it doesn't have to move fast it just opens up maven portals and does that but I don't really want to do that either. I want to like do what everyone else is doing. I want to farm maps and like get to red maps and feel progress and, you know, maybe try delirium maps eventually, some higher level stuff. Uh, I want to do that, but without having that same blow up the screen gameplay. Uh, but the cast on death portal thing, I've talked about this in a level in the leveling video where it actually is, you know, optimal to level up an alternative method like doing a four-way or five-way legion encounter and getting afk xp and then just hitting cast on death portal dropping determination throwing in haste and just using two portals per map or a portal per map without any issue and then farming twice as fast as you would have all Otherwise, if you were just focusing on getting experience yourself. So one of the problems is related to it being a soft core trade league by nature. That, that, that soft core is in the title is literally soft core. It means that you can die and it don't matter. Uh, one of the ways to solve this problem that they never, ever, ever implement that people would riot is if you die, you lose some of your currency that is in your inventory, let's say, um, and you go back into the map, you can't retain, you can't regain it. Even if you get your body back, you still can't regain it. Like that's like a, that's like a very aggressive approach to forcing people to make more safe defensive choices. They'll never do that. Um, and then my hopes and dreams down here, we can actually jump to XP cheese gets neutered. Uh, these are things that I would like to see in 3.22, and I think this is very unpopular because I'm such a solo player. I don't play in like a clan or a guild or a party, um, and I don't do a lot of TFT uh, rotations of Chayulas or whatever. Uh, a lot of this is about, you know, party players would absolutely hate me for even suggesting this, but I do hope that XP cheese gets neutered somehow, specifically five ways that are funneling arm tiers because that's something that's sort of like a a dark secret that you know you're not really supposed to know but everybody kind of knows but nobody talks about it and because of services like you know tft providing these you know community hubs and making it so normalized i mean it's so so normalized like everyone on twitch all these people will suggest they'll even suggest to a new player Hey, just go run Legion five ways just to get yourself to like, you know, the next five or so levels. And then it'll probably make things easier. You really need those skill points in order to, you know, optimize your build. You need the next cluster. Um, 
I mean, it's like a recommendation. And it's even something that in the last video I talked about experience and leveling in Path of Exile, I even recommended it uh, just because it makes sense right now. It literally is like, it makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't you? But um, I, I would like to see them make changes to it. Maybe that's unpopular. I don't know how they would make changes to it. Uh, but in its current state, I don't, I do think it's kind of dumb. I think it's kind of dumb. Um, so I wish that I was the kind of person who, you know, after I suggested that there is a problem here, I wish I had a great solution to the problem instead of just pointing out the problem. But the reality is I don't, and I don't know if there is a problem. So this is sort of maybe an unsolvable problem. Like you should put it up here. Um, mana build skill tree buffs. This is another archetype, just like slam builds, that I was intentionally trying to, you know, shove the square peg into the round hole type type of thing, where I was trying mana builds that didn't use Indigon, because I do feel like Indigon is kind of a, it's a crutch and also a bit of a cheese um, when it comes to mana archetypes. I wanted to see a normal Archmage Arcane Cloak build actually succeed not just like once you have s tier mirror guild mirror items not just once you're really strong and really fat you know have a bunch of currency to spend on it i'm talking like i want someone who is building into a mana build to be able to level it up naturally and healthily and not want to pull their hair out because right now there's no comparison i mean you follow a guide on uh, an ignite elementalist it is it's super brain dead in comparison. Mana builds, it's basically a not not a build. It's an off meta build. Same with my slam builds that I love so much. Really off meta because it's bad. <laughs> and it's hard to it's hard to level up. It's hard to like get all the way to red maps with it. Um at league start. Numerical changes. Uh these kind of no-brainers. Uh trash skill gems. You know, every single league, they should just take a quick glance and be like, why is nobody playing this? Oh, it's because it's a bad gym. Maybe we should do something about it. Just even little minor buffs, anything is better than nothing. People joke about the cleave radius change that they made that one time where, you know, there's horrible, horrible skill gyms, you know, like dual strike and shit. It's like some of the worst skill gyms in the whole game that they're just not touching and they make that one cleave change. People joke about it, but as I've said in past videos, I would so much rather see them make any change at all. I don't even care what the change is. Just make a change. Just change it up. Do a little something. I fucking love patch notes. Everybody lives for these patch notes. And then the same thing with ascendancies. I am happy for the buffs and I'm always here for the buffs. I think most people are like, I'm here for the buffs, but you know what? Me personally, I wouldn't mind seeing some nerfs. I have I have no problem when they nerf it. I think a lot of people hate nerfs and they lose their shit. That one big patch where they nerfed the uh, item drops where literally everyone was losing their mind like it was like Armageddon. And I'm like, dude, relax. I love to see changes in the game. I want changes. I want changes. Now, everybody wants the changes to feel good. And you just assume that, you know... It has to be a buff. In order for the change to be a change that I want, it has to be a buff, but you know, nerf some shit. I, I'd love to see different ascendancies at the top of the played charts. That's what I want to see. Buffs to random uniques. This is my last one. Of course, there are, are a lot of uniques that used to be played and used to be playable, but unique value has tanked since... Um, Conquerors of the Atlas. Like Shaper and Elder items, sure. Back way, way back then, uniques still were like high freaking value. You still used them in a lot of builds. But ever since, I would say Conquerors of the Atlas is like the good one. Um, but then Siege of the Atlas, like the most recent big one with the Searing Exarch, Eater of Worlds, those mods, having those implicits, like just an extra two stats. Unique items are trash. They're so bad right now. They're just the value. The only reason to even use unique items is because you can corrupt them for free because they're always so freaking inexpensive. The corruptions, it's the only, the only reason that unique items are played at all. And so I would like to see 
some random uniques, especially unique weapons, just buff them. Just buff that shit. Like, people, you're going to end up using a rare weapon eventually anyways. Just like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then some of the armors too, there's like some gloves and stuff where I look at it, I'm like, can't you just give this piece of shit item like a flat 50 life or something? like? And But balancing this game, I think, is a a tall task and close to impossible if not strictly impossible right i don't think it's really possible to balance a game of this complexity and i think that actually is a healthy thing in a lot of ways because um it incites some level of change and it's like there's a cycle thing and it's things kind of flow in and out of fashion and that's what makes a game healthy and intriguing and that's what makes the player base come back to it but damn i mean once again, I'm looking at my league start options and I'm like, I don't want to do what I've done the past few leagues, which is always start bottom left of the tree. But I kind of like I want to. I want to let me feel good about starting Earth Shatter again. I've started Earth Shatter so many times and it's so trash. You end up just for strictly further behind everyone <laughs> because it's a worse archetype. Anyways, um, and then we're going to talk finally, really quickly, we're going to scroll through this. So the League Mechanic, Trial of the Ancestors, you visit the Karui Afterlife and you try to fight in a tournament. Basically, the way that it was explained in ExileCon, at ExileCon, was that it's like a auto chess, auto battler, you know, type, type game. Auto battler where there are enemies on one side enemies on another side and then they fight and you hope your little dudes win and the other dudes lose but you are also there on the field um so kind of interesting actually um last time they tried like a different game within the game was the forbidden sanctum and that was an overwhelmingly successful league mechanic i think i think everybody loved the league mechanic i think that league went really well obviously without actually playing it i don't know how this is going to feel i do like the main thing that i would say i love actually about this league mechanic is i don't necessarily think that it caters to the zoomy builds which is what you know what i was just talking about it's interesting and we'll see if the rewards actually match up <laughs> if the rewards make sense right this is one of those things where if it takes a long time and it's very time consuming, like heist, heist is a good example. You know, if it is one of those things where you have to really lean into it in order to get good rewards out of it, then nobody's going to freaking want to do it. Like, no, everyone's just going to want to do mapping like always, you know, assemble your team. See, here's a little example board and pretty, it looks pretty deep and complex. And, uh, you know, but Sanctum was deep and complex as well. So I have pretty high hopes, high expectations, uh, really looking forward to it. The very last thing we'll talk about is they they already announced reworks of two of the ascendancies. They announced a rework of the Guardian. My first instinct of this is outside of one single node here. This one node on Wavering Faith looks really good. None of the other nodes to me look very compelling. And I'm not a minions player, so I, I can't speak to uh, Unwavering Crusade or radiant crusade um but if you're a minions player maybe this kind of thing excites you and interests you i probably i'm not expecting to try this new reworked ascendancy you know the unwavering faith does look cool it does it looks really actually kind of kind of busted recovery rate is notoriously difficult stat to get but the chieftain this is a marauder ascendancy i've played a lot of chieftains so i'm particularly interested in this rework now I didn't know fully what to think when I first saw this. I was sort of unsure. I think there are a couple of needless modifiers. When I see some of these things, there's a little bit of like, you know, you're making it too annoying to play. But a lot, I mean, a lot of people think that, that it's a really bad class, ascendancy. Like, it's no one's going to play it. It's so much weaker than the other ascendancies. It's not strong. It sucks. Um, I do kind of feel that I feel like people are sleeping on the offensive power of it a little bit. It got some great new defensive nodes here. 
And then some of these, the, like the Moon's Presence one, this looks awful. It just looks really, really, really bad. And I don't understand. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I can't, cannot, I legitimately, I was thinking about it so hard. I cannot think of a reason why you would ever, ever pick this notable up. It just looks awful, terrible. But um, these two down here, though, Tuo's four strength into Tukahama's War Herald. These two look good, good enough to where I can just ignore that node. Uh, this node seems really weird. I think this is one of those ones where someone's going to find a reason why this is busted somehow, but it doesn't. My eye test is like, okay, it seems average to below average. And then this one, a lot of people have talked about this, the sun's light. Nearby enemies have no fire resistance against damage over time while you are stationary. There are a lot of keywords in here. Nearby enemies is one. Damage over time is one. Stationary is one. Uh, and you kind of need a POE scientist to even begin to understand what this means. It's supposed to be an offensive notable. I'm never expecting to play this. I don't really play that many Ignite builds anyways. Maybe I will try it out, but... If I'm picking this Ascendancy, which I might, I'm considering next league, I'm going to pick the two defensive notables here, and then I'm going to pick the two offensive notables. Um, skills from equipped body armor are supported by level 30 Ancestral Call or level 20 Fist of War. I think people are sleeping on this a little bit. Um, I saw some people talk about how this just, there's no offense, good offensive notables on the class. Sun's Light is super, super like specific and also kind of bad. Whereas, you know, there are other ascendancies just have flat more damage. I've talked about elementalist a lot. Elementalist kind of pisses me off still. I do hope it gets some nerfs. Totally broken class. Um, anyways, I do think people are sleeping on this though. I think the level 20 fist of war is a little bit slept on. It's pretty freaking good. I play a lot of slams and having a six link when you're in freaking like white and yellow maps because you have a five link, it's pretty freaking good. I mean, it's really strong. So um, I think that's a little bit slept on. And then <laughs> Ancestral Call, they're trying to make strike skills like, hey, play strike skills. Uh, we'll doubt, I doubt it. Anyways, I've been talking for way too long now. Um, this was a long one, but I'm excited for the patch notes. See you all next time. Bye.